term is symbolic play. All right, what are we talking about here? We talked about imaginative play on Tuesday, and I'm sure that you had some questions. Well, about how do we get to imaginative play? Well, symbolic play is one of the stops on the choo-choo train to getting to imaginative play. Symbolic play is endowing objects with other qualities to play with them in socially relevant and appropriate ways. Okay, what? What, what does that mean? Let's go on to our working definition. Symbolic play, using imagination to turn an object into a functional toy. Okay, so first we have to start by saying that for our kids on the autism spectrum, play isn't necessarily reinforcing. It's not necessarily the thing that they enjoy doing and especially all the different kinds of play. There might be one type of play that they're drawn to and not to others. And when we see kids that aren't playing in the way that we want them to, to grow skills, because that's really what play is all about, it makes a safe environment in which to grow skills, um, we don't just go, oh, isn't it horrible? They're not able to play in this way. We can work to build that. So we've talked before on the show about functional pretend play. Functional pretend play is, there are all those toys. There's a whole aisle in every toy store that is devoted just to functional pretend play. It's like the scaled down version of the real thing. There might be a fishing pole that's plastic that a kid can play with it. That's functional pretend play. Um, they're playing with a fishing pole and they're taking on all the different things of what, you know, Uncle Bob does when he's fishing, right? Um, there might be the little teeny tiny shopping carts, the little plastic food, the little toy kitchen. Those are all functional pretend play. There's the little um, uh, plastic vacuum cleaner and the little plastic broom. There's scaled down versions that, um, you know, there's the phone, right? The cell phone, you push the button and it has a recorded thing. Those are all functional pretend play. And that's great because you give kids an opportunity to play with those things. They're taking on other roles, which builds towards that perspective taking. Um, and it's a, a way for them to do social things with household objects um, and play at them. Uh, all well and good. But what's the next step along the way? The next step along the way is being able to take something that isn't completely representative of that functional pretend play toy and making, endowing it with the properties to do that. So if we were going to take a broom, for example, and the functional pretend play version of it would look just like the real version, right? But it's just a scaled down version. It's the same colors, you know, it's got the little broom things at the bottom and the child can pretend that they're sweeping with it. And it's, oh, I'm a big girl. I'm a big boy. I'm sweeping just like mommy does, uh, or just like daddy does, right? Um, but sometimes you don't want to spend all the money for that and it actually builds all kinds of cognitive and problem solving things if we start moving into symbolic play. So symbolic play, maybe you're outdoors and you're going to build a pretend house and, and you've set the parameters for it and said, this is our pretend house. Maybe you've got some bricks that are there or, or those cinder blocks and you put them together and said, this is the house. And now you pick up a stick and you say, and now I'm going to sweep the floor right? The stick isn't really a broom, but we're going to hold it like it's a broom and we're going to use it like a broom and we're going to pretend that we're sweeping. Woohoo! This is symbolic play. Very useful to our kids because it allows them to pick something up and say, this is something other than what it is. This is a glue stick in real life, but I'm going to decide that this is an airplane and I'm going to go and be an airplane up in the air, right? Imagine the world that you open up to kids when you allow them to say, this is a glue stick, but what would we like for it to be? This could be a hairbrush, right? It could be all kinds of different things. It could be a car and we go beep, beep and, and drive the car on the, on the glass tabletop. We have so much fun when we open up the world of symbolic play to kids. And by the way, then the next step along the way is that we move on to imaginative play. Then we just take the thing away and we can say that we're doing a car and there's not a car there, 
right? We can make anything into anything. It's so exciting when a kid starts to get that there are no rules. Imagine what this can do for them long term. It, that, that rigidity of thinking that sometimes our kids on the autism spectrum have really loosens up. It allows them to be creative. It allows them to look at things and see things and solve problems uh, so that they can become the people that they're meant to be um, on the face of this planet. It really is so exciting exciting what can happen. If you think about the difference in a child who goes into a science class in say ninth grade, right? And if the child has a really good base of play and they did functional pretend play and they did symbolic play and they did imaginative play, now when they go into a science class in ninth grade, the idea of, well, does this do this or does it do that? Let's see. And how could we creatively put these things together to solve a problem? A ninth grader who's had that base of play is going to have much more fun and probably have some more creative ideas about how to solve the problem than somebody who has no concept of how to use something else. There's a whole series of lessons uh, in psychology that are address functional fixedness. Uh, I love those kinds of puzzles. They're the kinds of things of, you know, Joe is locked in a room with a window that's eight feet off the ground. He has only a hammer and a piece of string. How can he get out of the room. Uh, you know, those kinds, because what it ends up being is that you have to use the hammer for something other than to hammer. People get stuck and think, well, you've got to use the hammer to break the glass, but the glass is too high. And it ends up being that Joe has to tie the string around the hammer and use the hammer as a pendulum to get to something else to get out. Um, you know, if we, if we give people the ability to look at things and see more than one thing, Ooh, it's exciting what can happen. So symbolic play, don't leave it out of your child's studies. It's really worthwhile.